What's up, everybody? It's Heat Override, and I'm ready to break the pain for you this week. And unfortunately, it has been a painful week in a lot of ways, but that's because, you know, this whole episode, as you already know, you read the title of the episode. If you're listening to this episode, you accept, you expect it's going to be sad. And in some ways, I'm tr- going to try not to make it too sad at all. But at the same time, I mean, if, if I end up tearing up, I get it. I'm going to talk about my brother, Tom. He passed away on Monday this week. I did a whole VGM episode about a lot of the game music that me and him from the games that me and him played together. And that was just really settling. So a lot of the information and a lot of my video game talk about my brother is on my video game episodes, of course, and that episode too, because it's completely dedicated to him. Go check it out. It's the VGM sounds to Tom's heaven. Thank you. Anyway. I hope everybody's having a good day today. I mean, yeah, of course, it's been a, it's been a hard week for me. But let me just let me just bring it into you. You know, I'll give you a little intro about my brother Tom. Hard guy to get along with sometimes. Uh, like most men, he tried to be right a lot. He wasn't always right. Uh, more so, I always felt that he always wanted to be accepted. That t- Tommy always had this problem with acceptance. A lot of his friends are my friends. And they were his friend because they practically grew up with him always around us because that's what little brothers do, right? <laughs> They're always right there. And I mean, it's I, I'm actually the middle child. My dad's oldest son. I have an older sister. So, you know, those two always fight. <laughs> Julia and Tommy, man, they was always fighting. But I, I, was the, I was the rep. I was the peacekeeper. I kept them apart and everything like that. But later in life, they still just couldn't get along. And, and that's understandable. That, that's just the way it is sometimes. Yeah, there's probably some uh, things that aren't going to, well, they're not going to be ever repaired because he's gone, of course. And that's the sad part. But at the same time, you know, they did things. But that was never my deal. My deal was always to have a great relationship with both my sister and my brother. And I've had that. I've had a great relationship with my father. And I've had a great relationship, you know, for my mother's life. You know, she passed away, actually, her her, her anniversary date's coming up here, 319. So, you know, 219, he kind of passed away as well. So it's kind of like this whole month prior thing. So it's, it's been, you know, it's brought back a lot of emotions too, because it's usually an emotional time of the year for me. And, and most of my family, I'm not the only one, you know, a lot of my, my younger kids, you know, or my older kids that were young at the time, I remember my mom, you know, but she's gone, but my youngest child, she never got the chance to meet my mom. And that's things that just happen in life, you know, some things that are, you know, you're fortunate for, but other things just, you know, fortune has a a sad uh, twist to it and you have to move on. And that's kind of what happened on this week with, with Tom that, you know, growing up with Tommy, it was always, it was, it was always fun. Yeah. We fought, we weren't really different on a lot of things. We really played a lot of video games. We always would watch the Super Bowl with my dad wrestling with my dad. So he was a huge wrestling guy. He was a huge football guy growing up. He grew out of all that. The last thing I want to say that he grew out of was video games. And I think that 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 point, that might have, you know, changed a little things for me and him. And I think that that sometimes made him sad. I always still tried to always push the effort, talk about gaming, because it's always, I mean, you can see all the podcasts and you hear all the stories, but it was such a big part of my life. It just never left. Because with my oldest daughter and then my son, I played games with them as well, too. You know, when I talked about Secret of Mana and what it meant for me, it's because it started with me and and Tommy. And then it became me, Tommy, and my buddy Brian. And then me, my buddy Brian, and our buddy Bob. And then it became me, my friend John, and my buddy Cricky. And then it became my son and my daughter. And after that, it became my youngest daughter. So... For me to go all those years and play one game, The Secret of Mana, is why that game is just, it's always going to be practically in my top three, hence my number one. It was a three-player game, the magic system, the the weapon system, the charging of the system, the Zelda-like gameplay, just the real cool aspect of it for that time period of life. And just, a, I thought it was the coolest thing that they literally threw in a three-player thing. And, and that, that's where really a lot of gaming with me and Tommy. And then when I moved out eventually and the no mercy nights and the golden eye nights and the Mario Kart 64 nights were all done. That's kind of when he grew away from it. He got a PlayStation two. He was really into PlayStation two. So he played a lot of those games as well too. 
you know, you know, so, you know, if you go over it, you get you you'll hear on my episode with my VGM music for him that you'll see that Final Fantasy seven, Final Fantasy eight, make the cut. He played my Final Fantasy nine. He played Chrono Trigger. He played all of my games because that's why he had ever had to go buy games, which is really cool. And, you know, it just was, you know, I would come home and he would have a save file on my thing. And I never minded that because, you know, that was something me and my brother, again, when I was talking about him on my last episode, that was something like he sometimes would find things. I would find things and he would always try to be better than me. One time he was one time he got lucky. He created a guy in NBA 2K and played my regular Lakers with no creative players. He took that creative player, right? <laughs> so I know a lot of you is like hey, NBA 2K. Yeah, he wasn't good at sport games. So he didn't play Madden. He didn't play Tecmo Super Bowl. Well, then he started playing basketball and then he made his guy. He called him Big Mac Attack. So he made him like 7'10". He, he maxed everything. And then he gave him these huge shoulders. And I'm like, what the heck? So it, it, but when you played him in the game, you would start getting seeing he was getting fl- fl- uh, fouls. And I was like, oh, okay. And I had Shaq. This dude made Shaq look like Muggsy Bose. I'm like, why? And then, of course, he jacked all of his shooting up to 99. Mind you, this Nick team was crazy insane. You're talking Starks. You're talking just so many... Uh, Oh, uh, I think uh, Latrell Sprewell was on that team too, and Ewing was still there. So he would go as center. He would put Ewing at power forward. I mean, it was just, and I just had, and this was before the championship Lakers. So Shaq was like a Kobe, and there was real no update to that. And then Kobe was like an eighty nine. So my Laker team was good. Robert Ory, Fox, Derek Fisher. Yeah, those guys were good. But man, so he was just killing. He was killing it. I fought back. I took the lead, and I'm up by two points. It was a tie game, and this really was, really honestly, one of his greatest greatest achievements. He uh, he passed the ball in. He immediately gave it to this guy, and he hits a ninety. He was he just shoots up a freaking hail mary because there was no time left. He shoots a hail mary and he drains it, drains it, and he beats me, and I'm pissed. Because now my little brother has beat me in a game that me and my buddies are putting money up for. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, he does this fat belly flop, man. And my brother's a big guy. And he knew I'll call him. I, I would say, I'm sorry if anybody gets offended by that. But, yep, I let the word fat directed towards him leave my mouth multiple times. We were brothers, right? He did this fat drop on the ground. Just went like, boom, right? The whole house. You know, holds you, and he just screams, oh, I'm free. Bobby, you have no skills. And he runs up the stairs. My buddy's sleeping upstairs, right? And he's like, no skills, no skills. And my buddy's like, what's going on? And he was like, I beat Bobby in NBA 2K. My buddy's like waking up laughing. He's like, Rob, what the hell is going on? I'm like, I don't know, man. This guy was so happy to beat me. So happy to beat me. And and not a lot of my friends have. I mean, the people love to beat me. Okay, that's kind of it. I run my mouth, I do my things. But one thing you always know, whether it be that, even in point fighting, I mean, I keep, I don't run my mouth in point fighting. That's a sign of respect, right? But I will say, I go in there and I fight extremely hard because that's the way our team is. That's how our team trains. We fight hard, and that's the only way we know how to fight. So win, lose, draw, or disqualification, we're gonna fight that way. So no. No matter what, if you do beat us, one of my teammates or me, that most likely it's going to hurt. So it's, and it's not too easy. However, going back to Tommy, Tommy always thought that that was kind of a cool little thing. And that actually brings me up to things that when we were growing up, we were both bullied. Tommy was in special classes and had a lot of weight on him. He was bigger than the fifth graders. And I was in fifth grade, like my buddies, and he was bigger than all of us. And It was crazy because, you know, he got picked on for that size. But Tommy mentally was not around where he should have been because they always said he had a learning disability. And so some facts that, you know, growing up with Tommy, why sometimes he was really secluded growing up and maybe what led to a lot of his weight problems and because he was always at home. He didn't have a lot of friends other than, you know, if me and my friends left or went to the movies or something, he couldn't go. He didn't have money. He didn't have a job or something at that time. But eventually he got all that worked out. He eventually ended up getting some SSI and they gave him a little bit of money and they went back and he was able to really have nice clothes that really fit him. He didn't have cheap clothes like Kmart clothes and stuff like that didn't fit him. So he's able to go to big and tall 
he was able to buy himself a great pair of Nikes or Reeboks. Man, I mean, he had this pair of British Knights. Remember BKs? Right? He had a pair of British Knights. He loved them. I, my family really couldn't afford that for me. So that being said, you know, he had that money. He was able to have that stuff. I got ripped on. I brought that up. My own friends, friends that might listen to that probably listen to this podcast that I talk to a lot, ripped on me that my brother had better shoes than I. And he probably still had better shoes than my, now that, they, you know, even post-mortem, he probably still has better shoes than me. I got a pair of champions over there. I got me some Nike Air Force Ones. All right. You know, but that's about the limit. I don't have 20 pairs of Nikes. I don't have hundreds of pairs. You know, it just was never something to big with me and stuff like that. And I always take care of my shoes and clean them. I mean, come on, I might be jumping off a little bit. But he had all of that. He was able to experience all that. He was able to have a good life. And, you know, being bullied, I, I remember one time he was getting bullied. And something kind of happened. Uh, the guy kind of just slapped Tommy. And it kind of came, it came out of nowhere. We were walking home. And this kind of kid came out of nowhere because that's what bullies do. And he slapped him. But when he slapped him, and I was with my other buddy, Dave, it like folded a, like a layer over on his eye. So this, so Tommy grabs the kid and he's trying to fight him. But he's like, he's saying the whole time, I can't see. And this kid's trying to punch him in the eye. And I'm like, okay, as his brother, I was like, nope, not happening. I pulled him off. I didn't care, you know, so, you know, you might get jumped back in the day. And with me and my brother only being like that. And at, that, at this time in life, he wasn't fighting. So that was, that was kind of where I kind of had to protect him because mentally he had not cracked yet. That actually happens within the next three years. So now being bullied, it kept happening and happening. And then eventually he got so big in this between the sixth and seventh grade. We're talking over six foot. He's brought it up to about 380 pounds, man. He was just big. And he his his legs ended up bowing. So, of course, over time, we didn't notice this until it was too late. He ended up getting that all fixed during those years. It was during those years he got bullied a lot. And it was during those years that my brother finally snapped. He snapped on a kid. He grabbed him. He picked him up finally, put him on the wall. Because they couldn't catch kids. They were Because he was in cast that, during those years. They would kick him in his casts and run away and things like that. So he picked him up. He beat him down. They, they called it excessive. He was expelled from that school, went to another middle school where he eventually met his, his practically his lifelong friend, Louie and Louie. And then, well, he goes by Lou, but we know you was Louie, Lou. You hear this. And his buddy, John. And John and Louie were always like Tommy's friends. So like, John, when I, I brought him up a couple podcasts ago when I did the VGM 3D01, when I did Lucien's Quest, me, John, and Tommy all had save files on that game. And, and it was because we all loved playing that game, and it was different. And at that time, the 3DO was one of the more powerful, was the most powerful system. So having a game like that was really nice to have the, you know, the power and the sounds and the music and CD quality stuff. It just, it was really nice. So to see that all go down and and see, finally, Tommy step up. And, and, and the whole, so he went from this, the school, Wilson, he went to uh, Roosevelt. And he actually, he actually, they, they accepted him. They accepted my brother, Tom. And that is where Tom grew to know all of his friends that, you know, outside of his base core, which was really John. We ended up calling him Quest. So if you ever hear me say the name Quest, that's what he did. Because the first time I met him, I called him Johnny Quest. <laughs> And he knows that he was kind of cool with that because everybody really called him Quest after that. Because we already had another guy named John, you know, our guy Jay-Z. You know, we, we we already had a John. So, and then we had another John. So a third John was like, we got to get you a name. So at the same time, when you go back and you look at everything in the, what, what shaped Tommy, I want to say during these years too, there were some unfortunate incidents. It's things I, I witnessed, things I witnessed by people that were straight assholes, right? So I'm going to swear. You know, if I want to say this dude's a fucking asshole, he was. His name was Kenny Barnes, part of the, you know, pizza bomber bullshit. You know, I watched him. So Tommy, outside of getting bullied, got bullied by his family members, too. Uh, my dad w was definitely part of that for a while. But then my dad kind of cooled out on that. But there was other people. There was other people like that, that piece of human trash. Yeah, I'll say it. Anybody in this world want to come at me. 
I mean, how are you going to defend somebody that was part of the pizza bomber gig? I mean, <laughs> you know, I got a whole episode about that. You ain't got nothing to lie about that. I, I mean, just the fact that that man was part of my family as long as I've been living lets you only know that I know more uh, back behind the scenes, just like the rest of my family members know more. Well, they don't know as much as me. That's for sure. That's going to be a paid episode right there. You will get a pizza bomber episode from me. But me and Tommy kind of laughed about it, but we didn't know there was a lot of, it was a lot of uh, dark family history that came up. But even this one time when we went down to visit these people down in the middle of Pennsylvania, you know, down by State College, they took Tommy in the cellar and they beat him because Tommy was acting out while we were gone. And they beat him. And so my dad it was really pissed about this and was about to kill them. And that didn't happen. These guys died of natural causes on their own. I mean, you know, I'm getting, this is, this is like dark, but you have to understand what made Tommy, because at the end, you're going to understand why he made certain decisions in his life. And so he, th these dudes are just hitting my brother and they did. And that, that's the craziest thing is they never touched me, never touched me. And you can probably see why, because my mouth never shuts up. So <laughs> in a way, but Tommy was quiet during these years. Right. So you think about the bullying he got at school. You think about, you know, the, he had a great, like me and my friends always did. Oh, we re ripped on Tommy, but Tommy was about as big as us. So after a wrestling pay per view event, we'd all go out, we'd all wrestle. And uh, Tommy would, you know, just be in it with us. You know, there was a time that he, we couldn't do anything to Tommy, you know, couldn't pick him up. <clears throat> and there's a couple times a few of us had to hold him down. Yeah, it was funny. But, you know, so he was, you know, he did that. But around this time is when he started becoming, you know, a huge protector of me because we were getting into middle school or high school. So as I got into high school, I did have another protector. His name was Dwan. He was one of my oldest friends that always, always stuck up for me. You know, I owe a lot to him. I owe a lot to my buddy, uh, Dinky, you know, <laughs> there's everybody knows a guy named Dinky, right? So, you, you know, he saved me one time. I was just randomly just in the same area when I was talking about my brother got his eye folded. I got jumped and I was getting dragged through the mud. And he came over and they were scared shitless of him because the dude was literally, you were scared of Dinky. Dinky would beat your ass. That's how it went down. He was the party burger back in the day. There was a lot of people that were scared. And uh, maybe maybe somebody listens to this podcast has fought Dinky. Or so, I don't know. I don't know. But it, I'm talking to what I know, what I saw. He saved me. He saved me. And I threw those kids into the mud after that. So then I kind of became the bully. It was after that that, like, Tommy really picked it up. My buddy, you know, eventually we all left school. And I didn't, I've never really been in, like, a true fight as a man. So a lot of that left. And I think, honestly, the last kind of big scuffle I was in was it, it was in, like, a bar fight. But we had got kicked out before any punches or anything was thrown. So we left. We, we, we were all smart. Me and my friend Circle, we smart. We're really cool people. But we all make a little bit of money. And we all know that we should be acting a little right sometimes especially if you're going to get arrested. That's why a lot of us don't have records. So, <laughs> well, I would speak for myself. I don't got a record, but I know a lot of my good friends, they don't have records. They, they just always just decent people. It was, it was a really good video game circle we grew up, grew up in. There wasn't really a lot of like underage drinking at times. There wasn't drugs at all in my circle. The, actually, the drugs that were in my circle were mostly brought in by my brother. And that was, you know, that was marijuana. And if, if a little, again, if these situations are talking about any of these subjects make you feel, you know, indifferent towards the podcast, I can understand that, you know, I'm speaking through my sight, through my experiences, watching my brother do all of this. And so life goes on and Tommy finally developed into a big, pretty strong, stout kind of want to, I don't want to say he was, he didn't become the bully. But Tommy learned that he was never going to let anybody take advantage of him anymore. And that's something that got worse along the way, loaning money out to a lot of people. He loaned me money, but we were cool. We settled up. And, and there were some downtimes in his life because of his health problems. Again, now when you're getting into your mid-20s and you're getting up into the 30s, it's not so cool being 6'4", 380, and you've had about five or six knee surgeries on both your, your, your legs. And he would always have these weird things come up too, health wise. Like this one time, he he grew this cyst, 
grew on his back. So they cut it out and they have to leave it open. I remember that because we had to call him in on 9-11. And because we got we got ransacked. Like it was just straight dead, no calls. And at like two, one or two o'clock, all of a sudden it was like Friday at five to six every single hour after that. And I had like it was a normal day staff, but man. It was it was so out of out of whack, and we called him in, and he's bleeding and trying to make deliveries, and he's delivering in my car, which you know I that was something I was did while I lived with Tommy. He always had access to my car, and my wife Christy she knows this because he she would, he would always go pick her up. We would always say that was like he was going to kidnap Christy. It would piss Quest off all the time. Quest would be gone, and then it'd be like a hot summer day working, and I'd be working, or I'd be, and then, and then he would come home, and there'd just be straight nobody there. <laughs> Tommy, he's such a he was such an asshole sometimes too. Like he had a he caused a fight between them one time. <laughs> this is all under the <clears throat> under the thing. Sorry about that. And uh, he he uh, caused a fight. He had a girl, one of his friends, call up and start talking all this junk to Chrissy about like about you know, about John Quest, and she goes. She goes like so they they fought they got over it whatever anyway and in, in the end you know I ended up you know reconnecting with Chrissy we went to school together and you know long story short you know our kids have both grown up with us that's why we have our own daughter now we've been married for over twenty one years and we've been in this house for twenty years and it it just really has been a good you know godsend you know a lot of that and that is again all that you know comes with Tommy the Tommy always you know leaving him leaving him up to that bullying and things like that. Yeah. He saved me a lot. I've seen this man back down multiple people at once. And just literally anytime any of me, and my friends were out and somebody got beef, Tommy would just, just straight go, okay, we're going to do this. And then just everything would shut down and he would be a big dude. So immediately the bouncers are like, okay, if there's going to be a big brawl and that we see a big dude like that flying everywhere, there's going to be some problems. Right? So with so much, fun growing through those times and that but again you know he had been drinking he you know he didn't do so much marijuana during these years and a lot of my friends that did do that during the like late teens or something like that mid-teens we were all kind of drinkers and my my like core core we were always just drinkers the minute we were all 21 we were at the bar king's rook in it you know dance club in it we were just doing things <laughs> we won't speak about those things now will we no 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 yeah so we get back to it. And the thing about that is when you're looking at so many different aspects, so many different things of what makes a person, what makes a man, and you go, did they have a hard child life? Did they, what was wrong? Tommy had a good child life. The problem was that Tommy was bullied way too fucking much. And the, the way that these older men were able to hit Tommy and beat him and then get away with it until it was too late. And, you know, we never went back down to that place. Uh, near state college we never did never did i don't even want like sometimes i even cringe seeing pictures of any of them because i still have a lot of hate for that and i'm not i i'm not scared to say that and i know that there's probably a lot of good men a good memories down there for my family there's a there's a they have a family get together on that side of the family and there's just people that i used to know that you know have had ki children since then or now as old as me or maybe were a few years older than me that had nothing to do with any of that the problem is i just don't go see it because that whole area just, it's just bad vibes. I don't need to go. I'm good. I'm like, and I don't really know them. And that's sad. But at the same time, Tommy sometimes would go down. He'd go down with my aunt Jackie. My aunt Jackie would always go down to the huge family gatherings down there. I mean, they're huge. I don't know anybody. And I'm kind of like, I just kind of just work all the time. So I don't really make, I don't go out of my way to make time if I don't really know you or if I don't really have like a pass for you. And I hardly do that for anybody that's like, no, that's the same for everybody. Like, me and all my friends have all been together all these years. Not one of us has ever passed. And that's really hard to find. Like there were some kids that were when we were kids that have passed, you know, but I reconnected that with them and they were in our baseball. I was there. He was in my baseball league and my fantasy baseball league. And now his son took over the team and his son took over his, his football team too. So that just shows like the camaraderie and the things of just staying in touch with a lot of that. So I do do that, but because his son, Dylan, you know, 
he runs his mouth and he's a great baseball mind and a great football mind. He's he's challenging and he provides a, an awesome challenge to the league, just like his father did. And that's that's completely awesome. It's always going to be great to actually have always have him part of the leagues. So and that's part of what happens. And so but outside of t- Tommy, nobody has ever passed away. This was the first time that we've ever had to actually deal with any of this. So, yeah, that was it's it's been tough. I'm, I'm surprised I'm doing this because yesterday's podcast really, really helped me with combining with the actual sounds of the video game music and being able to talk about one of the biggest parts of our life again i don't really need to talk about video games on this podcast so that you know that'll hopefully keep the time down on it a little bit but at the same time i also want to say you know he also inspired me to leave normal jobs i was i if you notice i'm kind of just good with good you know i i set up my life where i've made some good decisions financially to where it doesn't take a lot of money my my bill situation is pretty good but he was always like, hey, why don't you push yourself past that? Why don't you go past that? He was like, yeah, you make this money right here, but you're fine making that. I have the same problem with my my ex because I was paying child support for a very long time. She was like, blah, blah, blah. But that's because he wanted more money. I don't need to pay that. I don't need to pay her no more money. I don't care about that. Yeah, that went to my daughter, of course. And she was, you know, uh, an ex that I didn't have to really worry about using the money in wrong ways. She definitely used it all for my daughter. But that also caused problems between me and my daughter eventually as well, too, because, you know, she sat around my daughter all the time bitching about money. And that wasn't me. I didn't care about money. I care more about spending time talking with that. And that's why I was able to spend so much time with my brother, because during all these years that my daughter was born and my oldest daughter was born and I was paying a lot of these supports, my brother was living with me. I didn't have money to go do other stuff. We didn't even we we didn't even watch wrestling during those years because we didn't have cable. What we had was our video games. That's what was on the the TV all the time. And at some point there was, there was two TVs because my buddy had to bring his and he had a system because he, you know, he moved in with us and that's just really cool. Like he always did that. He always, always inspired me, but I didn't always want to be inspired. So I've always, because I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And I think he knew that, but I think this, him being able to at least explain that to me, because during all these years after he left being the pizza delivery guy, he went, of course, became a trucker, which was probably one of the greatest things in the world, but probably was also one of the worst things in the world, too. And we will get to that in a few moments here. It actually led to trucker fights, which I think is funny is it's completely illegal. <laughs> and I didn't he didn't tell me this until like a year ago. And he was just talking and I was like, oh, he, he, he secretly had told me over the years that he was like, oh, yeah, I, I want a little money because you could gamble in these states, but you couldn't gamble in them states. He was fighting other truckers in the back and because he was so big, he was beating them. But the, he took some losses. He told me he was like, you know, sometimes there's bigger people than me, but I still fought them. You know, they would throw down a hundred dollars. So I'm sorry if I'm breaking anybody's bubble about it, but there's trucker fights and it should probably be a show, but it's in a, probably it's an illegal show. So that's why nobody does it. But I, I mean, I'm not the trucker. I'm not doing this. And I heard it secondhand. And the guy that I heard it from, my brother, is now passed away. I can't help anybody with how you're going to conduct anything they do. But my brother did, in fact, fight people for money. But that's because he's a big dude and had that. And that's that's part of the bullying that that was part of him. So what these people taught my brother Tom to do is to be mean. And that did come out with some of his wives and girlfriends over the years. And I'm not going to, I will not back that, you know, he ever laid a hand on them, but I know that there was some physicalities at times and he's always had, you know, kind of bigger girls. So it's not like, you know, it's like a, a 50 pound, but that makes no excuse for what he did. And I'm making no excuse for what he did because I completely do not know whatever he did, but I was not there. There was no police files reports or anything like that. And that I know of, and he continued a big relationship, you know, up until his wife passed, like they were still in contact and it, you know, any other of those girls he had talked to over the years. So if they really had a problem with that, I think somewhere along the line, they understood that he had a hard life too. And that was the thing with Tommy is that a lot of people never understood why he would be like this. Why, why he felt like he needed to be part of 
a, a conversation why he needed to feel like he he was he could offer somebody something mentally because all of his life he was told he was stupid not by me and maybe sometimes by me and that's my fault and i've I, we've had these talks so believe me me and my brother have had a great relationship all of our years even in our fights we've got our stuff out but we never swung on each other after we were men and that's because we knew that we had to sometimes yell and say things that may hurt the other guy he went a little far sometimes bringing up things that had nothing to do with him and i get that but it's uh, you know some of my downfalls but at the same time those weren't downfalls for other people and maybe sometimes they were and maybe because i'm not i'm not everybody's you know knight in shining armor I am sometimes the villain in people's stories it, because, you know, you it just happens. You you do something for somebody, they do something for you. At some point, somebody feels that they're more valuable. They're doing more for that friendship and and things can happen. And it doesn't matter if you're a cool dude like me or flatline dude like me or I'm a total non-combative person. And that's why Tommy had to step up for me. And this is actually one of these situations happened where somebody lost their damn mind. And they were literally outside. They were they were putting their hands on a girl. And then he got arrested. And then he'd go buck wild. And he always wanted to fight my brother. And this is the day I thought he was going to fight. And Tommy had showed up because Tommy was like, no, I'm coming over. That's your house, Bobby. That's our grandfather's house. You deserve to be in your house. And he was like, and I will not let any man stand between you and your comfort, your family feeling comfort. He took his headset off and it backed that dude down. And that was the first time I seen this dude knock, knock this guy's face out randomly one night in the middle of the night. This guy just started beating the hell out of the six, nine dude that ended like it was an old friend of his. And these are all crazy stories, right? And he, he, he literally beat the daylights out of this dude outside of his, our, his house, our house, because it be, went from his house to in front of our house. And uh, this guy knows who he is. If you ever listen to this podcast, don't know who he is and you know i have no thought like that would have been the time that they would have fought but they didn't fight they said words and you know things in that me and that gentleman have gotten better since then and we're talking it's a whole, been a whole decade later now like his young kid at the time now is is old enough to drink so you know all that stuff is just because what happens and tommy was there to protect me from anything, no matter what was or what wasn't my my fault because his world motto always was you put your hands on my brother when i get into town i'm coming for you and everybody knew that regardless of if i was wrong or right so but believe me i'm not that big of a jerk yes i do do things that make me a jerk but that's all in fun that's just taking little fun little points in life where some of us blow up some of us don't some of us hold it in and it's letting it out on a podcast and just trying to be extreme with it so that some people can actually no, because that those thoughts do go through your mind sometimes. You know, when someone's just sitting there being a dummy while they're driving, we get those every day. I mean, that's why they make driving uh, bad driver videos, right? So trucker girls, uh, trailer trailer park girls, I'll, I will not get into this because there's definitely young ears around me, but we all know what that is, you know? And, and some of that trucker money he won in fights went to some of that as well, too. Also, they went to a lot of stake challenges. Uh, he did a little gambling out there. And he, a lot of it also spent extra money. He would use that money sometimes to go visit family members. If he was in the town or in near town, he would go rent a, a car and he would go visit a family member just randomly. And I've heard these stories over the years. And I heard another one again within the past week, a couple of days ago from my cousin, Lisa. But I remember Tommy telling me about this. So again, he's past this. But the one thing that this job did to Tommy and the one thing that all of those beatings and all that, the mental beatings that did to Tommy and all of the surgeries that did to Tommy was it destroyed his body. Tommy's body was not good. And me and him always had a talk. And I would, uh, I would, he would always be like, Bob, I'm not going to live forever. My body is really bad. And I know that he always knew that he was protecting me from, you know, how bad his body really was. Because he knew that, you know, deep down, like, I cared so much for him and that it would break my heart to even do that. So when I spoke of an incident that happened about three weeks ago on that Saturday where his uh, his bag br bursted on him and he 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 was he, he was kind of crying. He was in so much pain. 
And that's what kills me because I'm like, dude, why did you go back on the road? But he had to because, you know, he just didn't have things together and he, he needed his job to pay his bills. You know, when he got this bag on him, he lost his job and he couldn't work for a couple of years. And you add that with other things he did. And then you, you take that all together. And so your mentality is that you're working past the, a destroyed body has to go back to work because if he doesn't, he's going to lose everything that he fought for during all those years. And it shows a lot of people that sometimes in life, it don't matter how much you, 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 you want to have all these funds in the twenties. You want to have all this time together, but you don't get that all the time. And he continuously, you know, he, he, it did stake challenge after stake challenge. And that's what led to, you know, him having a, a clomostomy bag or whatever that is on him. And yeah, I'm not a doctor. I'm heat override. We can do IDP stuff all day long, but, <laughs> but he, that was the start of it. Like you, he going in and out of the truck with a body in that position with that on you only takes so much out of you. I could, I'm like, I don't even do that. I had, I destroyed my me playing football and I get cortisone shots every once in a while, but I do karate. Right. And I work hard at karate. And there's some days I don't even do karate and my knee hurts bad, hurts bad. So I can only imagine what another 220 pounds felt like or would feel like on just my one bad knee, knowing he had two bad knees. Right. And that's, that's huge. That's huge. He was a big guy, like I said, you know, but at this point, he's getting older. He has a job that doesn't really allow him to be athletic. And he has a job that's pushing him. It's a demanding job being a trucker. And so where this ended up leading was to his addictions. A lot of people will say that marijuana is the gateway drug to other drugs. That wasn't it. And it wasn't always pills with Tommy too, because he went through a pill problem, but it wasn't bad because the pill problem kind of got shut down. What happened was, and this goes back to that piece of shit I was talking about earlier, is that him... He got my father and my brother addicted to crack. And my brother literally dropped 120 pounds. And he, my wife was like, hey, Rob, your bro brother's on something. And I was blind because I wanted to be, I was being naive and I was being blind to what happened. And I knew Tommy knew that. And that's what I said when I said that Tommy knew that I was going to, you know, I, I wasn't going take any of this well because i'm not going to he's, he's a big part of my life and at the same time he kind of just looked over and just wouldn't tell me things because he knew I, I i couldn't handle when i left at his house that saturday i came back i was mentally bothered i was mentally bothered and i talked with him and i texted with him and he didn't tell me he went back on the road but my father told me he's like he had to go back on the road Another thing Tommy had also gotten into was heroin and his addiction to heroin also started taking tolls on his body. He got over crack and we're talking in another 10, 15 years later. And so we're saying probably for the past eight, nine, 10 years, Tommy has battled this problem. Tommy couldn't get good insurance all the time and insurances were really expensive for him and they definitely weren't going to give him pain pills. Because that had all been locked down. So Tommy, Tommy must have, I don't know how it happened, but he took a hit one time and it made his body feel fine. And he didn't tell us this for a long time until what really got into is because I, I would pick up my dad from his job and he would do a lot of parking for an event because my wife works at the event center here in Erie, the Erie Insurance Arena. And my dad would do all the parking for his law firm. And collect the money and you know that's that's how they rolled and i would go pick him up and every once in a while my wife would be with me my daughter was with me my older son my my oldest daughter was with me we started noticing there was something going on so we really caught into it eventually they he came out with it and he struggled and through his struggles you know he he had some overdoses he told me about and so when you think about you know, what you're doing to your body and what makes your body feel better to do your job and you're doing your job, but you're, you're not using a prescribed drug. You're using like heroin to do your job. 
because your body is destroyed. It shows that sometimes a lot of systems in this country fail because Tommy needed help. Tommy needed that help. He needed, he needed to take that. He walked away from his disability money years prior to come work with me. Cause even when he was working with me at pizza outlet, he still collected his, his SSI. When he became a trucker, he lost that all. And you think back, what if he just would have just mailed it in like a lot of other people and never had a goal of becoming a trucker one day? What if he never had that aspiration? What if it led all to this? What if it bought us? Because again, when I would talk to Tommy, he'd always laugh and he was like, you know, the people my size don't live past 56. And I said, Tommy, I need you longer than 56, brother. I need you, man. You're my brother. I love you. We have a lot to get to in life. You know, I want us to get to a point where we're both financially set, where we can spend our times not worrying about or talking about work. I wanted to talk about things that we love, video games. I wanted to get back to playing video games with him. And I was, I had been pushing him to buy a Nintendo Switch for years. And one of the big things I just told him is I was like, you know, when they released all the remakes for the Final Fantasy games, the first six of them, and they put them on the Android, I was like, Tommy, dude, you're at truck stops. Why don't you play these games? You know, but he battled, he battled and he fought and he, you know, had more health problems here, had more health problems there. And then he fought back. But over the time, that's what led to his, you know, his bills being behind all those times that he had to take off. There was never a backup option for him. He never had like a, an account that would give him money. Like you could say like an Aflac or something that would pay you at least 80% or 90% of your wage each week. Right. Maybe he should have. Maybe he should have. And it would have really made things better. But none of us have that. I don't have it. If I get hurt, you know, I, I make money. I do this. And uh, I mean, I, I can't live off my podcast, but at least I know that I would be. I, I do a little bit of money off my podcast where I could pay a, a few bills. So and I thank all of you for that. I thank all of you that support bring the pain and support all of my articles on drrodo.com. It means a lot. My brother wasn't really into sports anymore. So when I went to a full sports podcast, he kind of stopped listening. He said, Bobby, he told me straight out and he felt bad. He held it in for a while. And he was like, Bobby, because I told him, I was like, why don't you listen? You're always on the road. You could just at least hear me, you know, because I can hear him. Like, he, I have I have voice messages from him that he are on my phone. And <laughs> and, and, and we're sitting here and he, you hear it and he goes, Bobby, I have no interest in sports anymore. It just wasn't interested in him. He was so stressed to try to just catch up. And then all this stuff came in with the bag on him and that he was out of work again. And it just, he worked, he figured it out uh, through the lawyer and he was back on track and that's why he couldn't stop. And that's why, you know, it's sad that people in this, in, the, in America or ever or anywhere in this world sometimes have to go past, you know, losing an arm two weeks prior. There's just people out there that have a patched up arm three weeks later, they're back on the job site in a third world country because if they don't make that money, nothing happens for them. Nothing moves. And that was evident in my Nagus Charm Coffee episode when I was talking to Chris and he was talking about me and a missionary and, and, and how some of those villages only have coffee bean. And that's why he targets those vi villages for the coffee beans so that, that those people that he spent time helping on his missionary state runs and everything like that, that he is giving that money back to the people that he knows that that's what most people do. That's why sometimes you have to get out there and experience things. And so Tommy experienced new friends outside of Pennsylvania. He has trucker friends from all over places, all over Truckerville, like he, whatever he is, he has friends. And that's the, that's the number one thing about Tommy is he became really good, but he was still battling this addiction behind him and behind him. This addiction was killing him. It was taking tolls on his body and it, even when he stopped to get help and I would go help him, it would also lead to, you know, me taking it. It would also lead to where I'd have to, you know, take an extra ride on the weekends. I'd have to cover him, get him to the treatment centers and stuff like that. So at first I, I was, I didn't want to do it because I was like, dude, you have to learn your lesson. But then I figured out and I learned my lesson that it's not always about that, that I'm not ever going to understand that. And he said that to me finally, he goes, Bobby, you're never going to understand this. I know who you are. I grew up with you. I know how your mind thinks. It just doesn't do that. And a lot of people, a lot of you know how my mind thinks. How I'm a straight crazy dude. I bring the pain, right? But, and I'm a wild. And in a lot of my football podcasts, 
I, I deliver them sometimes with so much energy, it can turn some people off and I get it. But man, that content, that content's fire. And I deliver it that way. I make no excuse for the way I, I, I deliver it. I will always deliver my bring the pains away. I want to because they are my part. It is my podcast. And that's it. So, and he loved all my all podcasts when me and my wife, Chrissy, would just sit there just mouthing off and not to each other. But there were some times me and her would have an uh, opinion difference on air or she would tell me to shut up because I was talking too much. You know, I mean, <laughs> it was good times. But through his life of 44 years, because that's how old he was, he was to turn 45 this September 15th. He had a lot of pain. He, he definitely made some wrong choices into dealing with those pains. And it led to the eventual collapse of his body. You know, these last couple of weeks, he was just weak and weak and weak. And when he made his drop and went to lay, lay down, that's the last time that anybody ever saw him or heard him talk or received a text. It's the last time that, you know, I didn't get to see him that day because he was busy on the road and I was busy at my job. And then I went to karate. Life was simple. Life was what we do every day. And sometimes he would tell me, you need to break out of that. And I, I had tried my best to break out of that and to try to help a little bit. So I did. And that little bit did help him. It made him a lot happier hearing him, talk, you know, me sh sending him my karate videos and watching his brother grow, become more stronger. And that's that, you know, have more confidence in myself, teaching me self-confidence because now I don't have my brother protector. I was my brother's keeper. He was my keeper and he's gone. And I have a lot left from him. He left me with a lot of voice messages. And uh, so I have those. And he left me with a lot of great talks. And, you know, I, I don't talk finances with anybody, really, at anybody. He'd be the one person I would talk to. And I was the one person he would talk to, but not all so much. He was a little, you know, I think sometimes when after seeing a few of his bills and just seeing how, you know, sad things were getting and how hard he was fighting, there's so much stress on his body that when, you know, you finally get that here and you hear that and you say, you know, you, you're sad, you're crying, you feel hurt like you never hurt before, you know, something you're holding back right now. But at the same time, you, you, people go, oh, well, he's not in pain anymore. I get that. I would have taken him in pain to say hello, but if that's being selfish, then I understand why we all have to let him go. And and we'll always have him in my heart. I mean, he's in front of me right now. There's game stuff right here. And in front of my face, there's just the way it is. He's taught me how to, you know, when I got this tattoo, I got this tattoo. I think Zemp is saying that I am going to bring the pain. And that I am going to represent my podcast, this podcast, and every one of my episodes and say, hey, I was having a good time. And that's my content. And I don't care if, if you like it or you don't like it. I want all of you to love it. I want all of you to understand that it, a lot of times it's not always about being the high driven. Sometimes I do pull it back. And I pull it back a lot for my interview podcast, which this podcast had been written up for a long time. Just like my video game podcast I did yesterday had been written up for a long time for him. Because I wanted him to actually listen to them. And unfortunately, both episodes are now released post-mortem. So I love my brother a lot. And I hope that if you have a brother, a sister, a mom, a sibling, that you think you can work out some of those dealings, then work them out. I'm hearing all these stories where he had reached out to people and, and within the last few days and they went to get back to him. And it's too late. And sometimes it is too late when that first hand extension comes out and it throws off the other person because they had not talked or they had beef and you know this is a good lesson that sometimes no matter how good things are you know there's still some things with me and tom that were unresolved like again going back to more gaming going back to more things we experienced more fun times of him calling me up and rapping old rap songs from when we were kids and you know just having all that and it's gone but i have it i have some of it so all that'll carry with me the rest of my life, just like this podcast will be out there, just like everything else. And I hope that this helps a lot of people and understand that you can be shaped by your childhood, but sometimes you go to step out of that childhood. And when he got that job as a trucker, it allowed him to make money to do harder drugs. And that's exactly what he did. And that, that was the weakness. That's the weakness that 
a lot of addicts, you know, struggle with. And he, it ultimately, of course, led to where everything is now. But make, make no mistake, I didn't miss a minute with my brother. Regardless, we talked mostly every week or every other week through all these years. I got him text. He used to not be a texter, and I got him texting a lot. And then he found a voice to text. And that's why we were getting all the, the singing podcasts over the last couple of years. Uh, singing podcasts, singing messages. And so I don't want to drag this out anymore. I thank you, all of you for listening. I'm happy that I made it through without shedding really good tears. I mean, yeah, I, I just, because I knew I wanted to do this on video. So I wanted to make sure that I did the best for all of you. There was a couple of times I, I, I got held it back, but you got to be strong. You got to be, you got to, you got to finish strong. And even if you're doing your life and things don't work out the way it is, it's going forward and always remembering those people or paving a path that people will always rem remember you for, because this just isn't about him. One day we will all meet that maker. One day Pan planet pain bringer will close down for eternity. And unless somebody picks up that torch and keeps it going and keeps, you know, the podcast going or keeps what I stood for going then, or has all of this to at least look back to, then that's what we have. I want to thank everybody for listening to this podcast. I want to thank everybody for understanding why this podcast had to happen. And I want to thank you for being fans of bring the pain for all being, being pain bringers. And I hope that maybe you learned something from this podcast about addiction and that, you know, there is a way back that it's not always about, you know, people talk about, you know, you affect other people too, every time you use or something like this. And, and again, this, this is not the reason why my brother passed away. My brother passed away because of all the things that happened in his entire life. It was the using, it was the beatings. It was the mental wear downs. It was those people just, just always, always trying to feel like they had to be the bigger man until the bigger man finally stood up and then, you know, took over and eventually had the time of his life. Again, thank you. I hope everybody has a great day. And I want you to always remember to bring the pain for you, your family. If you haven't talked to somebody, call them. Call them and talk to them today. Say hello. Send a text. Why are we not doing this? It takes three seconds. It takes less time to do anything else in life. And you can do this. And that one message may come back. It may flourish another relationship with the person you haven't talked to for years. I stress that because a lot of people don't have what me and my brother had for a lot of years. And there was sometimes that maybe he felt like our differences at the time maybe took a step back or take a step away for a week or two and give it some times. But we always talked. We always talked it out. And our first talk was always explaining our sides of that situation and moving on. I hope all of you figure that out as well. So have a great day, everybody. And always remember to bring the pain. Oh, yeah. May the pairs be with you. I love you, Tommy. I will see you. But for now, tell everybody what's up and tell mom I love her too. Oh, yeah.